my video. Right now. All right. Welcome to Kabbalah of Adam. What this will wind up being is the six o'clock news, <laughs> where you will get your truth about what's going on in the world through the prophet Haggai, from the word of Hashem. Is today what's, the current? Yeah. It, it, this you're going to get the current news through the prophet Haggai today. Okay. And uh, I, we do want to dedicate this uh, class to Michelle Magnuson. May her journey to the gone be swift. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit on the Arab Rav a little bit because that's what's going on in the world. The Arab Rav and Esau. If you've been following along, I do just a little thing of the origins of that. <clears throat> I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, however, because... There is a lot of good Torah that we need to get to today, especially with the world events and as it regards to the temple and such. So without further ado, let's read our prayer and let's learn the secrets of the Torah. What do y'all say? Sound good? Right. Yeah. Root of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our Father, by bowing down and kneeling that you brought us closer to your Torah and your Holy Work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your Holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you, that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins, and they should not bring separation between you and us. And may it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and to you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor, as a aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our, <clears throat> to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants, through which you revealed your wisdom to the world, shine. And may their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us, so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit, <clears throat> enlighten our eyes and our learning, as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel, open my eyes so that I will see wonders from your Torah. Because from his mouth, God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Okay. Where to begin? A little bit of a resolve here. So, Russell, what was one of the notes that I said I wanted to go over last week and I... Um, because we're to start with uh, Og uh, oh, yeah. in okay. the Ark. Uh, Og in the Ark. Okay, so one of the big mysteries of Torah is if God wipes out all the quote evil in the world at Noah's Ark, how did it get back? Right? That's a big question. All right, the fact of it, it never left <laughs> because Og clung to the Ark. Now we know from the Arizal. Uh, that concerning the four she demons and Og king of Bashan and his bed was made of iron and that whole deal, the, the bar, Barzel, which is uh, the mitigation of the bed of iron, is uh, the, the, the iron is the word Barzel in Hebrew, and that is uh, the B and the Z and the R and the L of uh, Bilha Zilpha. Rachel and Leah. So there's the front side mitigating the back side, right? Because Lilith and Machalot and uh, Zaria and Sagria uh, and Nama, right? So there's there's the four on the back side and you got the four on the front side. So so you have the the back side which is Sam, Samuel. The front side is Adam, or we're gonna say Jacob. Now, Sam is Gematria 130, which if you take the five heavy denning multiplied times the Havaya, the 26, 26 times five is 130. And Jacob lived 130 years. Mm -hmm. So we see these parallels going on here, all right? Now, um, related to the 130 years which Adam consorted with the Lilis, with this, you know, the emitting seed in the Yabok River. So one of the things I found today for us, for the, for the class here, let me see, is there's a, there's a Torah piece and it says, 
they will teach, if you're in the Apples of the Orchard, I'm on page 1057 of the Apples of the Orchard of the Rezal. And they will teach, teach your judgments to Jacob and your Torah to Israel. And they will place incense in your nostrils and burn offerings on your altar. Bless, O oh God, his legions. This, is, this quote comes from Deuteronomy 33, 10 through 11. So the Rosh Teva of play, uh, the in, place incense in your nostrils is Yasimu Ketora Ba Apeka, which if you take the, the Yud and the Kuf and the Bet, it spells Yavok, the Yavok River. So the smells in the nostrils are the Yavok River. Now, this is a, this is has to do everything with where Adam was and what Jacob was doing on the ladder on Jacob's ladder. Okay, so the the numerical value of the initial words on your altar is the same numerical value as Yavok, which is one twelve. Now, if you remember in our Haggai class. If you took Elohim and Havaya, uh, which is uh, 86 and uh, 26, that's 112. And remember wine press, if you took the union and the blessing and holiness, which is the Yud, the Bracha, and the Kaf, it spells Yekev, wine press, it's also 112. So wine press is 112. The addition uh, Yabach is 112. If you add Havayah and Elohim together, it's 112. Guess what? It's all just the same thing. They're using the gematria of the word to let you know this is the union of Elohim and Havayah. This is creation. This is this is the gan, right? Mm -hmm. The wine press is the gan. The Yabok is the gan. Probably you sowed, nevertheless, because it's indicating river. But all of these things, it's all happening all the time, right? It's it's an iteration upon itself. So the 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 numerical value of of the incense in your nostrils, it's going. Where's it going? Going to the gun. Why? It's the same same numerical value on the Rosh table with the first letter of each one of those words. So, uh, and we're we're, we're going to get to a place where they've made God angry. In, uh, in Haggai here. So the word for nostril, off, and, and, and anger are the same words, right? So the flaring of the nostrils when one, one gets angry. So I just wanted to kind of briefly touch there. We're seeing this 112 come up quite a bit, right? And uh, the one, the, uh, yeah. I don't even want to go there. We, we start getting confused. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go back now. And now we know this related to the 130 years Adam was consorting with the spirits, which is derived from Samael, whose numerical value is 131, which is 130 plus the Kolel. All right? The reason the Torah used the word Adam for man in the phrase and man whose skin Sarah, had Sarah, who, who had lepers, right? Instead of using the word ish, is because that sin causes Sarah to appear on the skin, and it is committed by an individual in the sense of reliving the life of Adam. What is the skin? The 70 nations. So I'm going to take a really deep concept and try to make it really, really simple. Israel is the front side. The nations and the heir of Rav and Esau and all of that is the back side. So Torah is the front side. All of the religions are the back side. So if you go to the back side, and this is why they don't want Jews marrying non-Jews, because it is is if you had made union with Samael or Lilith, if you are a male or female, you, you are continuing the fall. 
if you're not doing Torah, you are ultimately worshiping the backside, other gods. Yeah. Okay? It don't matter Jesus. It don't matter, it don't matter what you call him. You can call him Yeshu. You can call him Yahuwah. You can call him whatever you want to. It's ultimately equal to worshiping Sam. Because you are having union with that other side. Which is called Sarah. Leviticus 13. And they were afflicted. 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 Isaiah 53. They were afflicted. 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 Afflicted is Mitzora. Sarah. Is skin disease. Which is indicating on the 70 nations. It's part of the 70 nations. What do they say about a... a, a, a a garen can be like Sarah can be an affliction, right? So he is succumbing to the sexual temptation as we see that Adam did with the backside. The only name used to describe someone in the fullest state of divine consciousness is Israel. Before Jacob was given this name, Samael was attached to his thigh. Remember? That's the whole ladder of the fighting in the angel and he hit him in his thigh. Mm -hmm. It's not his thigh, it's his yesod. Because the backside has to attach to yesod. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, and we, we have female yesod and male yesod. Okay? And he was limping because he was struck with regards to the other rib that Adam had previously lost, at it, as it was written. And he took one of his ribs. This rib was made into Eve and not the other wife, Lilith. The purpose of Jacob's, the, the, the perfect purpose, I'm sorry, of Jacob's stay with Laban was to work and rectify Adam's sin. As he later told Esau, he dwelt, quote unquote, dwelt with Laban. The word dwelt is alluding to the numerical value of 613, which is the number of commandments, that he kept in order to perfect reality. He's fighting Sam, is what he's doing. Having done this, Jacob prepared to return to the land of, of Israel, as, as inasmuch as the land of Israel is an, <coughs> is an analog to the Garden of Eden. Gan Elohim, Havaya and Elohim, Gan Eden. He returned, his return there was to be spiritual equivalent to Adam's return to the garden, to uh, the restitution of reality to its pristine divine state. Now, this is all going to come in play here when we get into Zechariah, verse 3. It's going to be massive amounts of information. But when Jacob returned to the land of Israel, which, as we have seen, is a metaphor for marital relations mm -hmm. with the front side, after his stay with Laban, he had first prepared to confront Esau, another personification of Samael. The night before their encounter, he wrestled with Esau's angels, i.e. Son. Mm -hmm. And although he overcame him, he was limping because he struck his, quote, hip socket. So Jacob's hip socket was dislocated. Now, at the conclusion of the encounter, Esau's angels blessed Jacob and informed him that his name would become Israel because God did not actually give Jacob this second name until later. After Jacob actually met Esau and the incident with Dina occurred and Jacob built an altar at Bethel. Thus, there was some lapse of time between Jacob's struggle with the angel and his completion of the rectification because making an altar is making the Yehu, the union. Rectification of Adam's sin by signaling that he has been renamed Israel. In other words, he came he established the front side, removed the cleap out of the front side. Mm -hmm. That's we got 130 over here, and Adam 130. You got 130 with Jacob. You got 131, which is the Kolel and Israel. Mm -hmm. So we can see this. This whole battle is nothing but the Adam in the Garden of Eden. It doesn't matter who they are. Mm -hmm. 
okay? All the way down to the end. What are we seeing right now in the world? We're seeing the aspect of the Arab Rav, right? And Esau. Now, what's, what's going to happen is, as we as I get into Rav Bali, and Hashem says that he will shake the nations and shake their kings. Remember the czars and all that? And nation will go against nation. Because they've, these two factions, Esau and the Arab Rav, have afflicted Israel for 6,000 years. And at the end, it is going to ramp up and he's going to make them afflict each other because they've afflicted Israel for Israel's entire life. But remember what's coming. Purim is coming. And what is the secret of Purim? Just when it it's getting bad, 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 and at the last possible moment, when it looks as if, as Though everything's going to be lost, it's all over in one moment. God removes it. And mm -hmm. it's due time I will accelerate it. Kohator. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's being accelerated right now. Right? We got them talking about the temple over there. We're talking about the temple over here. You know? We have gold and silver coming in. You know? Th things are happening, but... We're right there on, on, and the whole Malchut, earth, is being shaken, right? This is, that whole pandemic affected the whole world is shaken, right? And it's going to get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And you have to know, as, as evil looks like it's getting higher, holiness or Kedusha is always way levels above. And it's run by the SARS. All God has to do is remove that SARS. That's it. And it's all going to culminate. Gog and Magog, Armageddon is not is really nation against nation against nation, and they're all going to turn to Israel, and then they're all going to turn on Israel, and that's the kicker, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're right in it here. So let's now get into Haggai. We're going to finish Haggai, and and this stuff is really going to blow you away. What Rav Ali has to say, okay? Let me see where where I was. Yeah. But it's all done to remove the cleat. It's just about the cleat. It's about the backside. I've uh, as it says in Psalms, and he created me back and front. Right? Mm -hmm. Haggai, page four, uh, 1405 in the Big Tanakh, <clears throat> chapter 2. And I'm going to read 20 through 22. The word of Hashem came to Haggai a second time in the 24th of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judea, saying, I am shaking the heavens and the earth. I will upset the thrones of kingdoms and destroy the strength of kingdoms of the nations. Now, the Peshat, we are living. Are we not? I will turn over a chariot and its rider and its drivers and horses and their riders will fall down one by the sword of the other. Ravali says, The sword of the matter, the secret of the matter is this. Because the prophet went to assure them that the Holy One wanted to make their building successful and to remove all kinds of persecutions and accusations from them from above and all the preventions from below. Right? And you already know that it would not be possible to do this except through the means of shaking the supernal Guvarot. As commanded by Hashem, the arm of the highest heavens and the kings of the countries of the earth. And this is the secret of I am shaking the heavens and the earth. And that's what's happening today. 
And that's your news, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, sports. In verse 22. And through the guru themselves, Hashem embitters the high sarim, sarim, the high malakim, on their levels. And this is the secret. And I will overturn and uproot or uh, uproot the thrones or upturn the thrones of the kingdom. And there is no or overturning except from above to below, as is said. Turn to Proverbs 12 and verse 7. Proverbs says, The wicked are overturned and are no more, and the house of the righteous will endure, will stand up. That word is not endure, the word is stand up. <clears throat> what is the house of the righteous? Mashiach ben Yosef. And Yosef stands up. Remember the whole thing I read about Midrash Kanhomim last week? about that the Tsar of Esau comes and, and and the Tsar of Joseph stands up and he is pure as the driven snow and Esau is corrupt and he has to bow before him, right? Remember that whole thing I talked about last week? And here it is, all right? So we're seeing it. Now, and the wicked are overturned and are no more. What's happening? Like Putin or don't like Putin. The world will, the world, evil will clean up the worst kind of evil. Right? The, the, greater, less, the, the lesser, the the greater lesser evil. evil will cure the greater evil. Mm. <laughs> Guru rope mitigates Guru rope. Exactly. The snake venom is what you give yourself for the snake bite. And it is also written in Job 28, 9. Job 28, 9. Job 16 something. 1655, 1655, Job 28, 9 says, But God stretched out his hand to the flint and overturned mountains from their roots. What verse is that? Job 28, 9. 1655 in the uh, page 1655. 28, 9. He will overturn mountains in their root. And this is the secret of Hashem cuts down their high roots as through them the Sarim put their roots down among the Kedusha. So these high angels, they're trying to attach to Kedusha as well from the backside, right? This is, this is, People call it a spiritual war. Don't call it a spiritual war. It's a primordial war. It's been going on for billions of years. Well, we're talking about actually Daniel 10 2, where the, the, the struggle of the, the sorry and the struggle of these angels are going on. And, this and then in verse 12, it says, in, in chapter 12, it says, and Mikhail stands up. That's a big problem when, when that happens. Okay? So, but you're correct. Absolutely. So, because the, the war, the war's going on up there. 
What's going on out here is we see the result of what's going on up there. As above, so below. As above, so below. Right? Mm -hmm. But this, we have to have stimulation from below to change up there. You know? Mm -hmm. And you can pray in anybody's name all you want. It ain't going to change the situation. Promise you. Not unless it's Hashem, Melchim, Tzibaot, right? I don't know. He doesn't hear, he won't hear the other on purpose. As Psalm says, your prayers are an abomination to my ears. I think it's Psalm 28. I could be wrong, but I got it written down. Hashem will cut them down from the roots, these sorry that put their roots in among Kedusha, and they take strength, koak, from it to surmount their accusations and their persecutions against Israel. And this is the koak, this is the strength, the power, which is called the strength of the kingdoms of the nations. I had a good friend. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that. Jewish boy. He's good friends with you too, Russell. Lives in Jersey. He asked me, he says, do you think I need to think about moving back to Israel? And I said, I wish all of you would move back to Israel. Because if all of you moved back to Israel, Mashiach would be here. <laughs> right? I said, you got to understand the only reason the nations have any power is because because of the Jews living in those nations. Because the Shekhinah and the Shefa are connected to the Jews that live in those nations. When those Jews go back home, it goes with them. Mm -hmm. And I told him that, and he goes, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of truth in that. You know? And so, as, as soon as, if all the Jews would, 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 would go back, you know, not because of anti-Semitism, because they want to worship the Holy One and build the temple, the power of the nations we'd be gone but because they're in the nations the Sarim have power thus giving the nations power over Israel you know it's a don't give me your honey don't give me your sting thing right and this is the secret of and destroy the strength of the kingdoms and we find through this that the holy one blessed be he Turn over a chariot. It, this is called turning over a chariot and its drivers when he removes the sorry. Mm. The chariot of the impurity, which is the secret of the nukva of the hitzonim, the female of the backside, the hitzonim, the Arabra, and the Amalek, and Esau. And all her levels which are called her drivers. Every level. Berea, Yitzira, and all the sphere wrote in them. Mm -hmm. Right? From the Sarim down, <coughs> which is the secret of the chariot and her drivers. The Sarim and the kings of the nations. And through this, the horses and their riders will fall down. <coughs> as they are the secret of the level of the nukva and the, uh, the nukvin and the dukrin, the male of the masabutra, the impurity, as it says in Isaiah 31, 3. So turn to Isaiah 31 and 3. <clears throat> Nothing like a little Torah on a Wednesday night. 31 and 3. Egypt is man and not God. And their horses are of flesh and not of spirit. Hashem will stretch out his hand and the helper will stumble and the help will fall. They will all perish together. Egypt, Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome, Ishmael. That is Adam Blea all of the backside. As it did as it happened in Egypt, 
It has happened through every single exile there has ever been. This is the last one. And the helper will stumble and the help will fall. They will all perish together. As here is all the persecution and the accusation of the denning and judgment. And this is the secret of their sword. Their sword. All the persecution and accusation and judgment against Israel, it's all going to come on them now. As they fought, as they fought with it against Israel, and it was overturned now onto them, onto themselves to fight one against the other. And the secret that is written in Psalms 37, 15. Turn to Psalms 37 and 15. <clears throat> Told you I was going to bring you the news tonight. Their sword will pierce their own heart and their bows will be broken. And this is the secret of verse 22. And horses and their riders will fall down one by the sword of the other. And also the strengths of the of the the strength of the kingdoms of the nations. So if you look I'm going, to I'm going to try to show it right here. Um, if you're on page 1404, go up three lines, and you'll see the last two words. There's going to be a het and a mem, and then the, and then the third line up starts with a hey. That word is hagoyim. See it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this word... Right there. Can you see that on there, Brandon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got it circled, the Roshi table to those three words. Chet, Mem, He. Spells Chama, anger. A the anger that has that brought, ha brought on Hashem. Now, remember what we talked about last week. About Chamas. Right? And Chametz and Chama. Oh, I got it. Yeah. You see it? Yeah, yeah, I found it. It's a great drush if it's not the Peshat of the Sod. So it's anger and violence, Hamas, which is the uh, Hazech. Mamlach, Mamlachut, Hagoyim. Because we take the het, the mem, and the hay, this spells anger, which is the secret of the male, Chama, wrath, anger, and rage, of the impurity. And therefore, the Rosh Hashanah of the verse quoted is the strength of the kingdoms of the nations makes God angry. Because there is no strength to the Nukvim, the female, as they are the secret of the Malchiot, the kingdoms. And the Mamlechot, the earthly kingdoms, are from the side of the males. That's why it says kingdoms two times. Male kingdom, female kingdom. And this is the secret of Samael that rode upon the Nakash, the male on the female, to give it strength. To give it strength to crumble it. And uh, crumble, crumble it and to remove it in the secret that is written in Isaiah 24, 23. So turn to Isaiah 24 and 23. 
See, everything I've been doing before class now all comes into focus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the pre-class? In the pre-class. <laughs> they didn't get to see the pre-class, did they? Mm -hmm. Aren't you starting? We're in pre-class. <laughs> 24, 23. Right at the bottom of the page on 993. Mm -hmm. 993, bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. The moon will be humiliated and the sun will be ashamed for Hashem, master of legions, will have reigned in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and there will be honor for his elders. For the moon will be humiliated and the sun ashamed. This is the Masabutra, the impurity. Moon is the Nukva. Sun is our Ampin, the male. Mm -hmm. The moon has no light of its own. The moon has no light of its own. She's the Malku. Mm -hmm. That is the sun and the moon of the impurity of the backside. Will be removed in the revealing of the union of the front side of his union of Zion Nook. May he be blessed. For it says in Isaiah 24, 23, for Shem Sivaot will reign in Mount Zion. That's his union. And in Jerusalem. And there will be honor for his elders. As the holy Shekhinah is the sowed, the secret of the glory that ascends up to the supernal heights. As they are the sowed and the secret of the elders themselves. In the secret of the supernal elders as is known, as is said in Genesis 18.11. So turn to Genesis 18.11. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, well into their years. The really good best translation is, is they were in their supernal heights. <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, this whole thing. These are the supernal elders. But there's also the sorrowing of them as well. And he concludes the verse by saying, and everything is well understood as is said. So let me go back now and read 21 through 22. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judea, saying, I am shaking the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> I, will I will upset the thrones of the kingdoms and destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations. There's the Nukvim and the Dukrim, male and female. These are the Sarim and the, and the above and below. Right? I will turn over its chariots and riders, drivers, and the horses and its riders. Those are all the levels, as, mm -hmm. as he explained. One upon the sword of the other. Verse 23. And on that day, the word of Hashem, Neum, right? The word of Hashem. Master of legions. I will take you, Zerubbabel, son of Shetiel, my servant. The word of Hashem. And I will make you like my signet ring. For you I have chosen. The word of Hashem, master of legions. And indeed, it is the tzaddik that will labor in the perfect service until the completion of the Yehud, the union, that he himself alone completes and seals the place of the union and the matter that is said in Song of Songs 8, 6. So turn to Song of Songs. Eight six. This is in 1690. Eight. Let's see. 
8, verse 6. For the sake of my love, place me like a seal upon your heart, like a seal to dedicate your strength for me. For strong to the death is my love. Through their zeal for vengeance is hard as the grave. It flashes and its flashes are flashes of fire, the flame of Elohim. <clears throat> for this is his signet, his seal. Place me like a seal on your heart. It really says arm in the Hebrew. And this is the secret of verse 23. I didn't bring my other deal. What is the seal upon your heart? That's the, uh, the tefillin. The tefillin, yeah. Now, there's two ways. There's, there's two traditions. Some people just make seven, you know, which is the seven lower spiro. Mm -hmm. But then there's another tradition where they do three and seven, which is the yud. Because mm -hmm. that's ten. Mm -hmm. Ten is the yud. So... Because that becomes that, that becomes important. Well, it's a full part suit. It's a full part suit. The elbow would delineate. This would delineate absolute. This would be Berea Saracia. Mm -hmm. Okay. According to your ways, we learn that the Tutsadikim make the rectification, as they are the secret of the Dalit and the Yud. The Dalit is the knot back here, and they either tie Yud, but the tr the people that do the seven make the Yud tie on the top. But if you do the three and the, and the seven, that is ten, that is the Yud. Because this is the penemy of the Makif, the inner light, known as the seals, which is to fill them. Each of them seals and completes the rectification in the makom, the place, literally. And about both of them, it is written in Song of Songs 8.6, 8, Place me like a seal on your heart, on your arm, is the secret of the dollar. That is the seal on the heart of the queen, Literally as that is the place of its root and rectification. And it's the secret of the heart. Because the Dalit, Dalit is also, Dalit is David, Dalit is Malchut. Right? So that's probably why some of them do seven. <clears throat> Which is the seven lower sphere of the seventh day, seven. Because the Dalit is the king. And on the exact, and an example of the heart. And it is the king of the organs of the body, which is the heart. Because the heart runs the body. And it rectifies the love and the secret of song, Song of Songs 8, 6. Love is as strong as death. And turn to Psalm 44, 23. And what is this king he's talking about? Mashiach. Because Mashiach is not the redeemer. Mashiach is the king, and, and a Mashiach is an anointed king, and a Mashiach is an anointed priest, and a Mashiach is an anointed prophet. But the twin Messiah is the king and priest to build the temple. So, we're starting with the new heavens and the new earth. This is the new earth. Haggai is the new earth. Guess what the new heavens is? Zechariah right. chapter 1. Where we're headed. Uh, so Psalms 44 and 2, 3. Did I write that right? I might have wrote that one wrong. 
Because if you're sick, we will, we are killed all the time. What's that? Because if you're sick, we are killed yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you're sick, we are killed all the time. Very Love sick. is as strong as death. The love that the Jews have for Hashem gets them killed all the time. Guess what? It goes to that street's like Highway Six. It runs both ways, right? Mm -hmm. And he will shake nation against nation. As the seal upon your arm, that is from the Yud. The tefillin, the seal upon your left arm of the holy king, and it is the place of rectification and its root. And it, it is he that rectifies the aspect of jealous. And this is the secret of Song of Songs 8 6. Jealousy is as hard as the grave because the deeds and acts of man completes him. As, and as is the way and the path of man, so we will find. And on that day, the word of Hashem, Master of Legions, I will take you, Zerubal, son of Shetiel, my servant, the word of Hashem, and I will make you like my signet ring, for I have chosen you, the word of Hashem, Master of Legions. And that is all of Haggai. How much time we got, Greg? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Mm -hmm. Turn the page. <laughs> in the eighth month, now we have the new heavens. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of Hashem came to Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Edo, the prophet, saying, Hashem became wrathful with your forefathers. Wrath. Say to the people, thus says Hashem, Master of Legions, return to me, the word of Hashem, Master of Legions, and I will return to you, said Hashem, Master of Legions. We've got a bunch of Master of Legions going on here, don't we? Because it's getting male. It's getting za. See? Because what we did, we rectified the female. And now here comes the male. And this, this is, this is, this is, this is yeah, Zachariah, is, this is going to get so good. So I will go ahead and read the first verse here and I won't get into the ooey gooey until next week. Is that, so if the first verse was in the first class we ever did, but now we have to go back to it. Yeah, we're going back to that first verse mm -hmm. after doing, I got That's that. correct. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the matter of this prophecy which came to support the prophecy of Haggai, the prophet, the reason was according to the prophecy of Haggai that Zechariah had to come. The intention was to rectify the nukva, the female, which was Haggai's job, and therefore to explain that we associate it, and it is called by the name Eretz Hat. Hadassah, the new earth. And indeed, after the nukva, the female, was rectified, all her needs and requirements must be then drawn down into her from the shefa, from the aspect of the male, which is the secret, the raza, the mystery of the heavens. And for this reason, we call this connection which sounds the matter of this new Shefa outpouring known as the new heavens. And you already know that the eighth month is the month of Chislev. As on it, the new leadership begins early, which we went through in Haggai. And this is the secret that is said at the start, at the beginning of the verse. In the eighth month, in the second year of Devarius, which I, <clears throat> which after that it says, as I've already explained, is the secret of the prophecy of Haggai. And there is no need to repeat this explanation. 
raw volley sales. <laughs> it took us only seven classes to go through that. And this is and this is that prophecy that through Zechariah the prophet was because he was the rectification of Zakar, the male, who receives his lights literally in the secret, the Raza, the mystery of Abba and Ema, in the secret of Yud Hey of the Holy Name. Two, draw down the lights and continue drawing them down to his Nukva, female, to support her, to help her, and to sustain her, and to uphold her. She has no lights of her own. And the name of the prophet Zechariah testifies about him, that his root was from the male world, because Zakar is male, and he's connecting to yud Hey, Zachariah. And therefore, the prophet was transmitted to him on that level, literally, because everything needs to be rectified according to its roots. And you already know that there is no blessing available except for the supernal abundance, the Shefa outpouring, which continues and is prolonged in the secret of Abba and Ema. The verse quoted, because there Hashem commanded the blessing, life forevermore, in Psalm 133.3. And this is the secret of Zechariah ben Barakiah, because the word Barakiah is based on the word Baraka. So he's the male connecting to Yah, and he's the son, Ben, of Barakiah, the blessing from Yahweh. So his name literally tells you who he is, what he is, and what he's going to do. Just like that does. Just like every one of them in Torah. Right now, and thus everything that this matter speaks of is about the union, the Yehud of the Holy One, blessed be He, and His Shekhinah, His presence. The verse quoted the Zakar, male, and the Nekeva, female. He created them, and He blessed them, and He called their name Adam. In Genesis 5 2. This has been going on. It's just the garden mm -hmm. here. And this matter also says, Ben Idu Hanabi, the prophet. As this prophet testifies to his name and his prophecies, as the supernal male was aroused and awakened in the secret of the Vav of the Holy Name. So we had the Yudne, now the Vav. Mm -hmm. And Where's what? Where's it going to? The final hay. And who's that? Haggai's prophecy of the Nukva. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the supernal male was aroused and awakened in the secret of the Bob of the Holy Name with her in a complete and perfect oneness and unity and it's the secret of Edo. Because Edo means up into the Vav. Because the, i.e., the, the three letters of the name are Ayan, Dalid, Vav. If you split the word up, it's read Ad, Vav, which means up to the Vav. Saying that exactly and precisely the secret of the outpouring of the Shefa continuing from the male to the female, and she is completed from these three aspects known as light or or, and maim, water, and firmament. So you have or, light, spelled with an olive. Water is maim, spelled with a mim. And ferment is rakea, spelled with a resh. So the roshitavit of that is amar. That's my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and, 
And that is the word sane. Thus says the word Hashem, thus says, thus he was sane. Mm -hmm. The word sane is literally the light, the water, and the firmament. These are the beginning letters of Amar saying, as the matter says in the verse quoted, my Lord gave his word announcing to the great host, saying to the great, saying to the great host in Psalm 68, 12. This is Havaya precisely. And he pours out his Shepha from the male to the female, from the Havaya to the Adonai. And the name of Adonai itself divides a, a portion afterwards to the great host of the lower levels, as it says in the in explanation in the Psalms 68, 13. So turn to 68. And let's start at 12. Because it's describing this entire thing. And the Lord, Adonai, made a declaration. The heralds are the mighty host. That's verse 12. 13. And the kings of legions flee, they flee. And the dweller it, within its a portions of its booty, its shefa. So this is this is when the shefa is going to come down. Everybody's going to run for the hills, right? So now let's go back and read verse one. In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of Hashem came. The word Neum. Um, remember that is the uh, Adonai and the Haviyah, right? I believe. Let me make sure on that. That's a, uh, Naum, yeah, is the, is the Adonai, which is 65, and the Habaya, which is 26, that's Gematria 91. Na Naum is Gematria 91, is the word of Hashem. So that is when, when, when he and his name are one, that's known as the word of Hashem. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here we have it. The, uh, the word of Hashem came to Zechariah, son of Barakiah, son of Edo. So up to the Vav, right? From Abba and Ema, through the male, through the son, Zerapim, which is the blessing, through, up to the Vav, which is the prophet, saying. There's the saying right there. Now, um, let's leave it right there for today. And we will begin in verse 2 on Wednesday, God willing. And the Torah is amazing. And the sages are amazing. And I will see you next week, God willing.